I was 11 years old when Unreal Tournament dropped, a snappy, pulse-pounding, skill-based arena shooter that snatched the frenetic crown from id and wore it with pride. Everything about Unreal Tournament was a marked improvement over Quake, regardless of what version of Quake we're even talking about. From the art direction to the lighting, from sound design to the weapons and even, yes, the music. Sorry, Trent. Up to that point, I enjoyed playing Jazz Jackrabbit and Epic Pinball, but the moment I enabled the fly cheat and guided a thermonuclear warhead to a monster kill on Morpheus, let me tell you, Unreal Tournament 99 became my favorite game of all time up to that point. And the little Epic badge on the box? Well, it catapulted Epic Games to hero status in my young eyes. You can understand why I was so hyped then just a few years later when I was about 14 or so, and I left my PC on all night to download the UT2003 demo. My cousin and I were over the moon with joy for the latest release of Unreal Tournament, yet when we actually played UT2003, well, it left something to be desired. There was just something off about it. It was uncanny. Like the Doom clones before it, UT2003 felt like an Unreal Tournament clone rather than a proper franchise installment. And frankly, I passed on the retail experience because of the demo. The very next year though, Epic made good on the promise of a sequel, Unreal Tournament 2004. I hadn't been following the media surrounding the game, so when I was at my local Circuit City one day and I happened to cross this box, I bought it sight unseen. Or maybe I guess I should say demo unplayed. Sure, we'll go with that. I got it home and I loaded it up on my PC and I had an AMD GPU that I had bought making MySpace profiles for my friends and I played it all night until about three o'clock in the morning. It was everything that I wanted from a follow-up for UT99. The weapons just felt good to use and the music, I mean, the music had me sold at the main menu. I mean, there was an atmosphere to it. The maps were expertly designed, if a little uneven at times. There was such a variety of maps and they never really gelled into a coherent aesthetic, but that was kind of the charm of Unreal Tournament. And Tokara Forest, guys. Have you ever stopped to just awe over this map specifically? It wasn't just the maps though. I mean, the Unreal Tournament aesthetic has always had this kind of over the top machismo vibe borrowed from like Warhammer or Rescue Heroes. It, this dysmorphic uh, male figure that even made the women seem masculine. It was essentially an adolescent power fantasy and I was exactly the target demographic at the time. And it was kind of Epic's whole thing for a while. It wasn't just the aesthetic, I mean, it was the feel of the game. This absolute precision that the game granted and expected from you. The positive feedback loop that led to a zen-like flow state every time I boot up the game to this day. A shower of meaty jibs, the unconscious decision making, the headshots, the gravity of the announcer's voice, the adrenaline release of capturing a flag or getting a headshot or scoring a goal in Bombing Run. I mean, come on, the game modes? FPS staples like Deathmatch and Capture the Flag and the King of the Hill inspired Double Domination are excellent, but Assault and Bombing Run and the particular fan favorite, Onslaught. UT04 just got so much right. I still remember sleepless summer nights playing Assault with my brothers and our friends at our massive lawless LAN parties that happened pretty much every weekend. Dozens of PCs and bodies building up an oppressive heat, the cheers of victory, the panicked miscoordination of the losing team as offense makes their way farther and deeper into the base, and the scathing war cries after every jib. And then there was Onslaught, which had perfectly tuned gameplay, node control, loadout management, choice of respawn point, team coordination, and these vehicles? Many of the vehicles just felt so good, they felt better to control in many ways than Halo's vehicles. And that was important, because up to that point, Halo had supplanted UT99 as my favorite game, and had done so for a few years at that point. 
UT04 swung the pendulum back into Epic's favor for a very long time after that too. I thought of Epic as the good guy. And even when they made decisions that I found contemptible, like Gears of War's Xbox 360 exclusivity and eventually the use of games for Windows Live on the PC release. Why did I give them such a wide berth back then? Perhaps it was naivety. Maybe it was just me being too young to know better. But it's probably because UT04 was just a vibrant scene to be a part of. UT04 shipped with a copy of Maya, for God's sakes, which got me into 3D modeling. 04 wasn't just a game, it was a creative outlet. It was a community of enthusiastic and talented folks, an ad hoc competitive scene like no other, built around a shared passion for a game that put fun ahead of everything else, a purity that is far too hard to find today. And this was back in the Web 1.0 era, where most people were on dial-up. And SSL protected websites were so uncommon that browsers would pester you with dialog boxes about it. Games back then, in this primitive technological era, were basically an open-air market. They weren't locked down and they weren't the fleeting products that become unplayable after devs take the official servers offline. They didn't need kernel-level anti-cheat to address cheaters. They were actually cross-platform too, supporting Linux on day one. In many ways, they were generations ahead of the online games that we have to this day. I mean, let's be honest, Epic Games used to be the good guy. Now, not so much. They're in bed with fascist regimes like Disney and the Chinese Communist Party. They profit from unethical business practices. They distribute malware posing as anti-cheat middleware. They proffer vendor lock-in to video game studios. And worst of all, <laughs> the Epic Store. As our technology has progressed and internet speeds have steadily increased, so many companies have exploited this for private profit rather than to fulfill the mandate of improving the lives of their customers. Why? Because they don't think of us as customers. We're merely consumers to them. Epic is chief among the corporacrats, commoditizing their consumers, delisting their legacy titles to erase the era of freedom that an entire generation of gamers once knew, and forging a brave new world where you own nothing and you'll be happy about it. You won't be a creative, contributing member of an online community. No, you'll be a serf in Epic's metaverse lordship, subject to the tax of microtransactions that will evaporate when they retire Fortnite or their license expires for the Darth Vader skin they sold you just to have it stolen back with the flip of a Boolean value. <laughs> I mean, look, maybe I'm just being sentimental about the past. Maybe I'm looking at it through rose-tinted glasses. But I remember when Epic used to be the good guy, or at least it seemed that way. But whether it's nostalgia or what have you, I think it's pretty clear the key phrase here is that they used to be the good guy. So to my friends who are still part of the vibrant community of Unreal Tournament 2004, happy 20 years. I'm just hoping that the kids who are playing Fortnite today get to keep playing 20 years from now. Thank you for watching. Uh, that was my rant. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. And if you did, you can check out another one of my videos by clicking this button right here. You can also check out this one over there, which is my D&D &D campaign that I'm running on my second channel. I think that's going to do it for now, though. Make sure you like that smash button and get subscribed to stay up to date with all the fun stuff we're doing here on the channel. And I'll see you guys in the next one.